Okay, let's begin with a simple question. What is C? And to me, a C is a structured language. Uh, structured means that there are templates. And in C, there are a very few number of templates. The first template is iterative, which means we do A and then we do B. Uh, the second template is a decision. So we look at some data that we have and we decide to go this way or that way depending on the data. That's a decision template. And the third is an iterative template. It has a decision, but if the decision is true, then we'll perform some function, but the idea is we will perform it all over and over again until it matches. So these are the three basic templates of a C programming. And the idea of C is that there are not very many templates, it's a small number of templates, and there's a very, very simple way that they connect together. And we connect them together to build our software. Then we can ask the question, why are my learning C? Okay, why? Well, there's two answers to it. One is if we look at all programs, uh, we see that C is the number one highest percentage, 18% of all programmers in the world in 2013 use C. Uh, the second, just for fun, is uh, Java. Some of you may have heard of Java. It's right behind at 17%. Uh, there's a third language that you may not have heard of, but very popular, called Objective-C. Uh, and that's 10%. Uh, uh, down at number four and dropping, turns out, is C++, at, currently at 9%. My top five ends with PHP, uh, which running at 6%. So the first reason we're going to use C is many people use it. The second, more compelling reason to use C is the fact that this, as you know, is a course on embedded systems. In embedded systems, what is critically important is the input-output. And the C language is tightly coupled to the physical hardware of the machine, which means that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between things that I know in the computer and things the software can do. And for that reason, C is the largest programming language in the ecosystem of embedded systems. Okay, what's next? Let's look at the history of C. So we'll begin in 1969, and through the range of 1969 through 1973, uh, Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs developed a programming language called C. Uh, there was one called A, and there was another one called B, and his was better in his mind, so he called it C. In about a decade later, from approximately 1979 to 83, uh, Bjorn uh, Strostrup, also from Bell Labs, Strostrup took C and added classes. Classes are an object or a way to abstract and this language called C++. We will learn that if you take C and add one to it, this is a programming statement in C, this could be written as C++. So that's why we call it C++. In 1999, the language C99 was developed, and this is actually a professional a professional language that adheres to very strict standards. So a lot of people who use C actually uh, program in 1999. We won't 
because we believe that C is a simpler language. Let's look at how software looks in the computer. If we begin with C code, we can write an expression where the variable X is added to the variable Y and that contents are stored in the variable C. This same program, seen in assembly code, might look like this, where we take the assembler instruction, add, and we store into R2 the contents of register R1 plus the contents of register R2. In other words, R2 equals R1 plus R0, where these are registers. And lastly, what the computer sees is machine code. Machine code are ones and zeros that represent the assembly instructions. So this particular assembly instruction, when it shows up in memory, is going to be the hexadecimal E, B, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0. And you can see that this is a 32-bit instruction. So in our computer, which executes thumb 2 code uh, on the Cortex-M processor, that we have instructions which are 32 bits long. It turns out we also have instructions which are 16 bit long. Remember that in this particular class we are going to be programming in C, but that C is then going to be converted to assembly and then into machine code. And when it executes, the machine uses the machine code. When we develop software, we're going to use an integrated development environment. And this environment has a number of components. It has an editor that we type on. It has a compiler, which we saw converts C code into assembly. It'll have an assembler. which converts assembly code into machine code we're going to need a we're going to need a linker and you'll see the linker today the linker is going to take individual software modules and we will see that we will have a startup.s a uart.c that's our io and the programs that we write today are going to be in main.c. And the linker will take the components, the software components, and create one software system for us to use. The loader will burn the machine code into ROM. And lastly, we are going to have a debugger which we will use to test it. All right, stop talking and let's have some fun.